hello we have learned about the upper half plane model of the hyperbolic plane so there are various models of this hyperbolic plane so one is this upper half plane with the hyperbolic metric what we have done so in this lecture so we'll be giving the disk model of the hyperbolic plane so the disk model again it is isometric to the upper half plane with respect to hyperbolic metric so what we'll be doing so we'll be taking unit disk and we'll be putting a metric on that unit disk so which will be isometric to the upper half plane with the hyperbolic metric what we have put so let us begin okay so this model of of hyperbolic plane okay so first so let us consider the this mobius transformation okay so what we are going to do here so how we are approaching this disk model so that we'll see so consider this mobius transformation t from c union infinity to c union infinity so this mobius transformation is defined by tz equals to z minus i by z plus i so suppose so this z it is a real number so then note that so this mod of tx so x is a real number so this is equal to mod of x minus i by x plus i so this is equal to your one so this implies that so t of x lies in a unit circle so which we call it to be s1 and also note that so t of infinity so this is equal to your one so this one it belongs to your this s1 and now so let us take some element ei theta in s1 and let x equals to your i times 1 plus ei theta divided by 1 minus ei theta so then so t of x so this in fact it is equal to your ei theta so this you can check and also and this x it belongs to your r union infinity so this you can check so therefore t of this circle so it is nothing but or t of this r union infinity it is nothing but your is the whole circle so now let us take some element in this upper half plane and let us see so under t where does it go and let z equals to x plus i y so z minus i by z plus i so which is nothing but equal to your mod of tz so this is equal to your root over x square plus y minus 1 whole square divided by x square plus y plus 1 whole square so here so this y is greater than 0 so this will imply that so this 4y is greater than 0 so this will imply that this y square minus 2y plus 1 is less than y square plus 2y plus 1 so this implies that so y minus whole square is less than y plus 1 whole square 
and this will imply that that uh, this x square plus y minus whole square is less than x square plus y plus one whole square. So therefore, so this mod of tz, so therefore, so this mod of tz, so this will be equal to your mod of z minus i by z plus i, so which is strictly less than one. So therefore, so this t of z, so it lies in this open unit disk. So thus E maps this upper hub plane to your this open unit disk. Okay. So also observe this thing. So let W equals to Tz. And if we take the derivative with respect to Z, so DW dz. So this is nothing but equal to your 2i by z plus i whole square. And so if I put mod both side, so what we'll get, so this will be equal to your 2 by mod z plus i square mod dz. So mod dw square is equal to your one minus mod w square. So this is equal to your one by one minus mod of z minus i by z plus i square. And yeah, so if I take this square here, so we'll get this whole square here times the square of this mod dw, so which is nothing but 4 mod z plus i whole to the power 4 mod dz square. So this will turn out to be equal to your 4 mod dz square divided by this square of this thing. So this is nothing but equal to your mod dz square divided by z minus z bar square. So you can check this thing. Okay, so therefore what we have here, so what we have now, so four dw times dw bar, divided by one minus mod square to the power whole square is equal to your dz times dz bar divided by the square of this imaginary part of this set. Because z minus z bar, so this is equal to twice of imaginary part of set. So therefore we have this formula, okay? So here note that this, W belongs to your this unit test. So therefore mod of W is less than one. Okay, so now uh, you take this unit disk. And equip this disk with the metric. So this metric we'll call it to be Riemannian metric, or you can just treat it as a uh, formula with uh, metric d square. The similar thing we have done in the upper half plane model with this metric. So this, in fact, you can write in terms of this dx uh, dy also. 
So if I write down W is equal to your U plus IB, so D is squared, so this turn out, turns out to be 4 DU squared plus DV squared divided by 1 minus mod of W is root over U squared plus B squared. We have taken square of that thing times, uh, sorry, square of the whole thing, this whole thing. Yes. So this D2 with this metric, so this is called, is called the disk model of the upper, of the hyperbolic plane. And also what we have shown so from this formula, so what we have shown, so from star, what we have, the map, T from this upper half plane to this T2 is an isometry. Yeah, so because of this thing, uh, so this map T from this upper half plane to D, it is an isometry. So it preserves the line element. So it will preserve the metric also. Also note that because T is an obvious transformation, so the map T is, Okay, so what is this map? Z goes to Z minus I by Z plus I. So the map T is conformal. So that is, it preserves angles. Okay. So now the next question is, uh, what will be the geodesics in the disk model of the uh, the hyperbolic plane okay so we have we already proved this thing that in the upper half plane with respect to hyperbolic metric so vertical lines and semicircle which are orthogonal to real axis are geodesics so now note that uh, so any mobius transformation so any mobius transformation keeps the set of uh, circles and straight lines invariant. So this also we have seen. So this T, it is a Mobius transformation. So this T, it is a Mobius transformation. Uh, it is from this upper half plane to this uh, this unit disk. So if I take any straight line in this upper half plane, so image of the straight line, it would be either a circle or a straight line. So let L be a geodesic in the upper half plane. So then L is either a vertical line or a, a semicircle orthogonal to to this real axis r yeah so uh, l is a geodesic in this upper half plane so l is a part of is a part of either a vertical line of either a vertical line or a semicircle mm -hmm. orthogonal to this uh, this real axis. Okay, so T is a Mobius transformation. So then, so T of L is either a straight line
odd a so t of l it is a uh, part of a straight line or let me write like this so it is a straight line or a circular arc okay so now note that so this uh, so l uh, intersects R orthogonally. And T of R, so this is this circle. So therefore, so the so T of L it will intersect S1 orthogonally. Okay, so now what are the possibilities? So let me draw this uh, this upper half plane. So this is a, so these are my geodesics. This vertical lines are geodesics. So let us take this to be my I, and let us take another geodesic here. So these are my geodesics in this uh, upper half plane. And we have a map. T of Z is equal to U Z minus I by Z plus I. So this is my upper half plane. So upper half plane is going to this unit disk. And note that T of I is equal to zero. So this is my T of I. Okay, so now suppose uh, L is my this vertical axis. So suppose this is my L. So this this vertical axis passing through this uh, I and it intersect R orthogonally at the uh, origin. So T of I is zero. So because the map T is conformal, so this angle will be preserved. So this angle will be preserved. So therefore, and T of L it has to pass through zero. So T of L, it has to be this diameter. Yeah, so T of zero is equal to your, this uh, minus one. And T of infinity is this one. So this is my T of L. And again, now let us take this red one, red geodesic. Uh, it is passing through I. It is a semicircle and it is uh, intersecting this R orthogonally. So again, T of L, so it will pass through origin because T of I is zero. So T of L, again, it has to be a diameter. So this will be a straight line. So T of L is something, it cannot be your circular arc because then it will not intersect this uh, circle, unit circle S1 orthogonally. And what about this green geodesic? So this green geodesic, so T of this green geodesic, so again, it will be geodesic, which is uh, not passing through this I and so it will be a circular arc which will intersect. So which will intersect the circumference of this disk that is your unit circle S1 orthogonally. So, so therefore, so the geodesics, so geodesics in the disk model of hyperbolic plane are part of diameters and circular arcs intersecting 
the unit circle intersecting the unit circle orthogonally so these are my geodesics and also uh, one can check this uh, thing so we have seen that isometry group of this uh, upper half plane so it is if I take the orientation preserving isometry, so it is exactly equal to this PSL to R. So this, uh, so check that. So orientation preserving isometries of this Poikari disk or this model of this upper half plane. So this is equal to your PSU11. So where this PSU11, it is nothing but the set of all this matrices A, C, C bar, A bar. So this A, C are complex numbers. So A, C are complex numbers. And determinant of this matrix is exactly equal to your one. Modulo the subgroup containing plus minus identity. So we know that this uh, we have an isometry from this upper half plane to this uh, D2. So one can use that thing to prove that. So if I take this PSL to R and that map T pushes that PSL to R to your PSU11 to this group. OK. So in the upper half plane, so we have uh, the distance formula. So here also using that isometry, we can have this uh, distance formula. So this also I'll give as, an, give as an exercise. So this will be equal to your log of one minus Z W bar mod of that thing plus mod of Z minus W divided by mod of one minus z w bar minus mod of z minus w. So this also I leave as an exercise. So here the z w it belongs to your this disk. So this unit disk model disk uh, model of hyperbolic plane is also called Poikara disk. So we'll be using this two models of this uh, this hyperbolic plane. So both thing, both the models are isometric to each other. So whenever required, uh, we'll be either we'll be using this upper half plane model or the disk model. Okay, I'll stop here and in the next lecture, we'll be doing hyperbolic trigonometry.